What's up, guys? Uh, oh, there it is. Welcome to the Dan and Jared Show. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I like it. Hi, guys. Uh, welcome to uh, the Dan and Jared Show, I guess. <laughs> but no, I actually joked about that in the last video, so it works. You guys are getting the first look at the River Table in its completion in the van now. Before we even get into what, what this video is all about, which is uh, different beds for van life. But Dan, how do you like my table? I really like the new river concept with the islands in it and the multi-dimensional. I think yeah. that's a new touch. This was a carved out river. Uh, that I did myself with the help of Dan and Mark. But anyways, that's not what this video is about. This video is really different bed systems that we find in vans, that we can do in vans. So everybody's gonna be different. Yeah. Dan has a different bed than I do. I've had two separate different beds in my two different vans. What's your needs and what's your wants? So let's get into all that right now. What do you think? Sounds great. All right, let's go. Before we get into the the video itself, I do have an announcement that uh, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. So I will go into that right now for you guys. The video is sponsored by a company called Skillshare. I'm really excited to either get sponsored or partner up, whatever you want to call it, with a company like Skillshare. Now I'm very particular on who I decide to kind of move forward with these kind of things, whether it's product reviews or whether it's a company that is willing to sponsor me. I've done my due diligence. If you guys could only see the email chain that dates back a month ago, uh, I did do some research. I've actually even talked to a girl that is friends with me that actually is a member with Skillshare. She did not even know that I was going to be sponsored by them, but I asked her how she liked it. She is a graphic designer and she takes classes with Skillshare. He, she has a monthly membership with them and she absolutely loves it. She said, I don't know why other people are not on this. So as soon as she had that conversation with me, I said, okay, I have to finish up my sponsorship with them. About Skillshare is they have different classes and different opportunities. Now I am reading directly off my laptop. I'm not trying to hide that from you guys. They they don't have a script per se, but I kind of want to go over some, some really nice talking points. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step into their creative journey. I mean, seriously, that's really right up my alley and I'm sure a lot of your guys' alley as well. With thousands of inspiring classes uh, for creative and curious people on topics including illustration design, actually, before I even read that, I want to go over every one of their, their topics, their class topics, which is illustration, graphic design, photography, UI UX design, creative writing, animation, fine art, music, music production, film and video, what I do, marketing, productivity, freelance and entrepreneurship, I love that, uh, web development and crafts. There was like three or four in there that I would actually really like to benefit from myself. Bonus to all of this is a thousand of my subscribers, if they click the link below, they also get a two month free trial membership of the premium membership. So a thousand of you get two month of premium membership by clicking the link below and going into the Skillshare uh, website. So really, if you are a creative person and wants to kind of just broaden your horizons when it comes to your creativity, uh, something like Skillshare is really, really cool. Even photogra photography too. I guys, I wanna get better at photography. Uh, I want to get better. I want to get better at video and film. Things like that are real animation. I'm. I, I just keep on interrupting myself because if you guys are interested in that. Please click the link below, and the first thousand of you are going to be getting a two-month free trial premium membership. I do not want to sound like a broken record, but that's what I do. Beginners, intermediates, masters, it doesn't matter. It's for all everybody. So as much as I love Skillshare, I could probably do an entire video on them. They are a sponsor of this video. Let's go back to talking about bed systems and van life. Uh, okay, so thank you Skillshare for sponsoring the video, but now let's get back into what this video is about, which is bed systems. Uh, Dan, uh, while we took a break for a second, uh, asked me an interesting question and asked me again. Can the lagoon sustain the weight of a bed? Like can it, for the dinette style, can the lagoon drop? We're gonna go into the dinette system because he just brought it up for the first one. There's really five that I can think of that uh, people use inside their vans. And you, you and I have already talked about yeah. this which is dinette, the fixed bed, the couch conversion slatted bed, the Murphy bed, what was the fifth? The all oh, jacks, the, the happy jacks or whichever of that yeah. nature. The elevation. The elevation of, of beds, uh, thank you. The first one that Dan just brought up was the dinette style. The lagoon itself cannot handle the weight. Okay. The lagoon itself can only handle, I think like 50, 60 pounds okay. is what it's rated for. And that's why actually people actually only have small tables on these lagoons. You know, you put two laptops on here, it's like, you're not, you're not gonna get up to 50 pounds no. with two laptops, but you know, it cannot really hold that much weight. Anybody that has a lagoon knows that they're just like, it's tubed aluminum. 
you know, so it only, it only holds so much weight. What people do do with lagoons, though, and their tables is they use the table and then the dinette, it sits in the middle of the benches, okay. and that's where it, it'll sit onto. For example, if my friend Yulia uh, does it that way, or she's going to be doing it that way, my friends uh, Travis and Lauren, they do it that way with our viewfinder. What they do is they literally take off, they take this off which is easy, it's an easy mounting system. Mm -hmm. And then they take the whole lagoon leg off and then they put it in the dinette style. There's two different really ways of doing the dinette uh, bed conversion. There's that way with the with the table, right? Uh, from the lagoon leg. And then there's the other one, they use the telescoping leg. I've seen those, yeah. My brother did it with the telescoping leg. Um, just for price comparison for everybody, the lagoon is about 160 to 220, depending on what site you buy it off of. Telescoping, a nice telescoping leg, uh, is about $400. If you're going to have your your table in a fixed position at all times, I think it's best to go with a telescoping. It just makes more sense yeah, that way. Yeah, get in and out. Yeah, that and and the, the actual conversion from the dinette to bed is way easier than it is from a lagoon into bed. Do they have those telescoping ones with actuators in them? I don't know. Um, okay. I don't think, I haven't seen one. I don't see it to be a problem for someone to do a DIY version of it, though. No. You can do an actuator. The reason he brings up actuator is because he has one in his van. And he loves talking about his actuator. So, Dan, why don't you tell us what you have in your van? Because it's interesting. It's a fixed bed, but yeah. it has an actuator. So, an actuator is just a fancy way to say an electronic. What, are they electronic or hydraulic? But it. Either way. It's a movable piston. So, you like your Tempur Pudics, your Lazy Boys, where you push the button, your bed becomes a couch or just a lounge. You pretty much have an automatic futon. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. we have a fixed bed by basic sense. Yeah. Ours is actually on wheels, so it rows from the front van, back of the van, just so we can pull it outside. But it, but it is fixed. It takes up the space of a fixed bed. I mean, I guess you would say you took like a fixed bed, like we talked about, yeah. and an almost like a slatted bed. Yeah. And and made it into one. Yeah, a fixed slash more maybe more futon. Maybe style. futon style, right? Yeah. I I consider futon and the slat the slatted okay. version pretty much the same. Yeah. So it depends on you know which way you want to look at it. They work the same way. Yeah. And I don't, like, again, n none of these ways are better than the rest. It's just really a matter of preference what you yeah. like. Not everybody likes a Murphy bed, you know, and I point it, not pointing at me, but I have a Murphy behind me. Like, for me, I think the least practical is the dinette style. Now, that's just my opinion. The dinette style, I know of the people that do have it, they rarely convert it into the dinette mode because it's either bed or out gallivanting throughout the wild i was debating the murphy i looked at doing a dinette style but mm -hmm. i couldn't get over the fear of if your cushions aren't perfectly compressed do you fall in the crack i bring up an interesting point uh, you have to have them pretty tight have i slept on a like a bed i've sat on a bed with that has like separate mm -hmm. cushions i don't think it's that bad i have on my murphy the way that it's done is i have to take the second portion of it and like flop it down but it's a very, very tight fit. However, my lines are horizontal, not right. vertical with me. And yours are sewn together too, though, correct? No. Not... I was going to sew them together, but uh, in a last-minute decision that we decided not to. Okay. But I was going to do that so I could just flop them over. That's another thing you could do is sew them together. If you have, like, a slatted bed version, okay. you could just you could put your your sew, your seam right there so when the bed comes out, it just folds down yeah. as a back cushion into a, the rest of the bed. Is that what you did? No, because mine's just one solid sheet. Okay. Yeah, so we just use a basic fitted sheet to swap it out at the laundromat. Obviously, I feel that the best, I don't know if it's the best, but like the most efficient bed is a fixed bed. Yeah, you know, the fixed bed can kind of fall into our gray zone. Yeah. And the fixed bed could almost be elevation too, because it is a solid. I think if you are going to go with an elevation style, which those are great. Um, the only thing I don't like about them is because these walls are curved, especially in a sprinter, the ceiling is like 54 inches or 50, yeah, 54. And then the floor is like close to 70, 72. So that's a big, you know, difference, right? Yeah. With a happy jack system, your happy jack has to be upright. So if it's on a, a 90 from the roof down, there's a lot of dead space in here. So you can fill that with storage or something along those lines, but you know, you can't, it's hard to like, like when you lower that bed that you're going to have that that space on either side that's kind of open yeah so you have to almost like convert it in a way where 
that's either storage or something along those lines, right? Your van gives a good visual. Yeah, it does actually. This good line point. here at the top. But then down here, you see how much that's a good. That's my Murphy. Yeah. And it's what I do with my, again, same thing with the Murphy bit off the back door. The Murphy bit off the side door is a little different. But off the back door, when the Murphy comes down, you, I have this dead space. However, the cushion that Dan is sitting on right now actually just flops right up into place. And it's like a little pad up against the wall there. It's actually, it's easier for me to do it that way. And I actually like it. It's really comfortable. Yeah. But that's just me. I also feel that having an elevated bed or happy jack, whatever, you obviously lose whatever the height of yeah. your mattress is. So I feel that being in like a Ford Transit would be the best like sure. benefit right somebody that's only my height which is about five nine i could almost get it all the way up to the ceiling and almost have enough room to walk underneath it yeah depending on insulation the good thing though with an elevation style is say you do your mountain biking or just any type of biking mm -hmm. you want to throw it in there in a in a rush you don't have to disassemble it you can fully assemble it you can just have your bed up for temporarily mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's true too. So if you are looking into doing an adventure style van, you're saying an actuator or the Happy Jack is a pretty good... It gives you better access to your garage versus mm -hmm. a fixed, fixed bed. Yeah, the fixed bed is like you have a garage, that's what it's there for, that's what it's deemed for. You bring up a good point, like the people that are the adventure seekers, a lot of them go with the fixed bed because of that garage mm -hmm. space. Maybe you want to have a walkthrough. A lot of people want that walkthrough. The Happy Jack system is a good way to kind of... Yeah. You know, solve both problems. I think so. Or a Murphy bed off the side. Yeah, Murphy off the side is Murphy cool. off the side, because then you can still have the walkway. The people that are really seeking a full walkway through. Now, you don't have a walkway that goes front to back. Mm -mm. I don't have a walkway that goes from the back. I didn't have it in either one of my vans. I've been in many. You've been in many to do. Yeah. Do you prefer it? Do you, do you wish you had it? At times I do, but ours, where we can push the bed back, we're only like two or three foot mm -hmm. away so you can crawl if you need to right but most time you got so much gear under there anyways mm -hmm. i don't know that you're going to walk through it yeah because then it just becomes voided space i can get out the back when my bed is down <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know exactly. and you can you can jump out your back too yeah i just felt like access going to the back doors is it's not necessary yeah. i don't like for me, but a lot of people love that walkway and it's just like, the, I guess for the ones that really like those Instagram shots out the back doors, that's why they do it. I don't know. Maybe that's what they do it for. I have no yeah. idea. I, I don't just take ours in the bed. Uh, uh, the I, back yeah, yeah, exactly. I open up my back doors. I still have that, that banger shot. There's that fixed bed. There's the, uh, you know, the dinette version, which again, I'm just not the biggest fan of, you know, you have your happy jack system, which we kind of talked a little bit about. We talked a little bit about the fixed bed. How do you feel about the Murphy bed? And you're in one right now. I, I really like them. I really debated it. I just didn't want to sacrifice the storage up top for our van. Mm -hmm. Not to say you can't do it on the side and still have storage, but on our van, right? The height I wanted the bed at, I couldn't. So how are you gonna do it? Were you gonna you were gonna elevate the bed really high and come it off like like this way off the side? Yeah. And okay. So just trying to find that pivot point wasn't quite for the height of our van and the amount of inventory I wanted to keep under the van. Because what about a double Murph? Again, you have that seam. Yeah. The seam is what scared me. Okay. That's that's very understandable. Don't be scared of the seam. <laughs> what also goes into play with doing like a Murphy bed or doing a Happy Jack system or any type of convertible bed, really, what else do you have to take in mind? The rest of your layout. Yeah. Your countertops, your depth of your countertops, your benches, mm -hmm. your seating area, anything along those lines you've got to think about. You know, I sacrificed uh, a little bit of my countertop space. You know, I've got 24 inches where my fridge is, but I got 18 inches, you know, where my, yeah. where that is, where the rest of my countertop is. So it's like the same thing with a, a Happy Jack system. If you have countertops underneath the Happy Jack, guess what? That's only coming down to it, like that 32, 34 inch height, depending on how high your mm -hmm. countertops are. Now with yours on the shallow side, can you use an induction on this, on the shallow oh, side? Oh yeah, I can, I've, I've, I have actually a picture and I can maybe even throw it up here. Oh, I, the reason I have this six foot countertop yeah. is for prepping food. And I had my Instapot and my induction and a whole bunch of food and vegetables. And I even believe, I think I had my, couldn't see it in the picture, but I had my juicer on that counter over okay. there. So that was my biggest thing. I had the Murphy because of the, the openness of the van. Yeah, your, your van is a lot shorter than ours is. Yeah, I got the 144. You got the big 158? 
one fifty. I was just the old school model. No, oh, I don't know. It's like one fifty four wheelbase long. Oh, okay. Or fourteen foot behind driver's seat to back door. Wow, fourteen feet. What I would do with fourteen feet? Yeah. Or uh, would be like twelve. Ten. 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 Door to door. Oh no, back, seat back seat. seats to the back door. I have ten feet. Isn't it? Doesn't it seem uh, bigger? Yeah, the Murphy bed really helps. It, it does, it does. But the dinette is the one that I would, especially with elevator beds and stuff like that. Because you could do it, you know, you have your dinette mm -hmm. under your elevator. The dinette's the hardest So nice if, if that's the thing. If I was to do a Happy Jack system, I would have the seating area underneath. Right. So you're sitting and the bed's above you. Yeah. Uh, and then when the bed wants to come down... It's like, the nice thing about the Happy Jack is you can stop it anywhere. Yeah. Um, I've seen, um, you know, there's a couple builders out there that have done the uh, Sleeping 4, where they'll have a bed that's fixed on a lower, like, almost like 18 inches off the ground, and then they'll have a Happy Jack system that'll come down, and now you have a bunk bed system where it can sleep two up top, two on the bottom. Nice. Uh, yeah, I've seen a couple like that, and they're good. I don't, there's nothing wrong with them. Actually, they're really efficient. In that way. Now, just out of curiosity, can the elevator lift, say, a 150 or 200 pound person? You know, that I don't know. I'd have to probably look into that a little bit. I'm sure it can hold quite a bit of weight. Well, well I just meant, could it move? Like, if, can, you, if, you, if I sat on it, could you, like, yeah, like, and I'm way more than 150, but. That way, if you're, you get up early and your partner's still sleeping, if you need to just kind of create that extra room to get stuff from the garage, could you do that? You know, that's a good question. I That is, a, you know, that's another thing that you have to even think about is, you know, your bed is going to dictate if you're living with a second person, mm -hmm. um, you know, or do you have access to the kitchen area? Do you have access to, you know, the sink? Do you, can you brush your teeth in the morning? You know, because let's face it, we always don't wake up at the same time as our partners do. I'm sure you and Rachel have gone over this where you are probably an early riser. A lot of the times I take it by seasons, but that's why we put the rolling closet on my side. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you get up and then you move the closet mm -hmm. and then she still lies in bed. Yeah. Again, you guys have to see his van. It's a Swiss Army knife, so it's really hard to understand that. But they literally have a closet that takes up like a third of your bed. Yeah, it's 36 inches of hanging space. Right, and then you roll that back into the bed system, which is where you lay, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And then Rachel's still able to sleep in there. Yep. That's pretty cool. Because we have a full-size mattress. We could have went with a queen, and it still we went out the back port. Mm -hmm. Another thing you just touched upon is the size of the bed. Is yours twin, or is yours like a twin... Mixed mine's between. big. Mine's bigger than a twin, smaller than a full. Okay. It's slightly smaller than a full. I would. It's only off by like three, four inches. I don't know what it is, but a full is what fifty four, something like fifty four by seventy two or yeah. seventy four, something like that. Uh, I am under a full uh, width wise. I am linked there. I'm good. Let's face it, guys. We're in vans. Everything is custom done. You know, I don't know if you customize your mattress at all. No. Oh, okay. There are some that didn't. Yeah. I know there are some that, you know, put a full-size queen in there. And yeah. a queen is what? It's got to be big. I don't even know what it is. It's only five inches wider than a full. Oh, okay. There we actually started with a queen. And then we, oh, okay. when I put it out the back port, I went down to a full because it's like you only lose them five inches. Yeah. And that's the other thing. Like, all right, so did you notice a difference from going from, you know, those five inches, I should say? Mm -hmm. Especially you and a partner. Right. And I've had two people sleep on my bed, yeah. and it's about 40-some-odd inches, what, 46 or whatever it is. And so I'm just shy of four feet. I slept fine with another person on it, with a dog, okay? Like, we're in vans. We're going to have to make sacrifices, mm -hmm. you know? So that's kind of an important thing that you're like, oh, well, I need my queen-size bed so I can starfish. I think most people are adjust to a fool. If not like I a, think so. If not a custom size. The nice thing about sticking with standard size is you can buy sheets and swap them out, no problem. Absolutely. And, and fitted sheets and stuff. Yep. Guys, at this point, please comment below if you um, have any ideas or thoughts. Uh, a lot of a lot of my videos actually are based off of uh, the comments that I see here. Uh, the ideas that I get are a lot done from the comments that I read here. So please, uh, please like, subscribe, and comment below, most importantly. And throw in funny stories of falling in the crack, so... I'm just a Yeah, actually, good call, Dan. Thank you. If you guys are living in a van yourselves, uh, if you have had any issues falling in cracks or if you've woken up next to your partner and they're just missing, uh, I'm just kind of curious on where that kind of goes, like how that is. Which one have we not touched on? The slatted beds. Okay. The, the couch style. Yeah. If I didn't do the Murphy, it was going to do that. Okay. Uh, that was probably my second favorite, and I just felt like it was probably one of the better styles. Oh yeah, Tiny Watt Solar did it with their first van or second van technically, but their 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 known van. Yeah, um, that was probably one of my favorite convertible beds I've ever seen. Now theirs is like a a drawer trunk bed and then an extra piece of foam flips over too, right? 
Like, yeah, so they had it was actually a, it was a step up, which was I love that. Yeah, it gave uh, you a small garage. It was cool. Yeah, and I also like the fact that like they didn't have any overhead cabinets where the bed was. I think that's super super nice. Yeah. As you can tell, I don't have any upper cabinets here either. So when the bed is down, you feel very open. Yeah. Uh, that I always felt that that was nice. Having overhead cabinets, like even in a fixed bed position, you kind of feel a little cramped. Mm -hmm. They had it in a way where. Uh, their bed was one step up and then another step up, but the, the step up was the couch. Yeah. And then, and then that actually went over the step that they had originally had. And then, uh, the cushions that were their backrests then became, you know, there, and that was, it was all seamed and such. It was all sewn. And it was nice too, cause they had their bed slash couch right at the good viewing point. So when you yep. hold up to the spot, it was very comfy. I remember that. It's it was. Nice. The thing you do have to worry about with a, a slatted bed style is if you have, let's say, 24 inches of a couch and then you have another 24 inches that come out, that is now 48. Thereabouts, yeah. It's about 48, yeah. give or take, because there's going to be some overlapping. Yep. We'll just say 48. The vans are only 72 in length. That means you don't have that much room on the other side to put a counter or maybe a, no. a full-size club, whatever you want to do. Yeah. So it's something to consider. Again, it goes back to layout. A lot of this has to do with how you are going to live, you know, what you do on the road, like an example for work. For me, the reason I did a Murphy was because I wanted to separate living quarters from bedroom. And that's why I did what I did. I knew I was going to do a lot of work in here. I do a lot of digital work. I do a lot of online work. I do a lot of things like that. And I wanted to just make sure that my bed was separate. When I had my first van with the fixed bed, I felt very lazy because I would lay in my bed constantly. And I had a nice TV there. <laughs> I did. It was nice. Yeah. felt lazy with that case. Like if I had the, the slatted bed, again, I think I would actually have it out as a bed mode way too much. How do you feel about all that? No, I, I definitely think there was a lot of mentality or mental games and all of that of having different locations for where you're at. Mm -hmm. So putting, having it where you make a bedroom is really cool. Now, since I know you've got, you got, you can change that color, right? Of your lights? No, that's, that's, I can dim it. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're fine. I can uh, dim it. I, that's all I can do though. But yeah, you can, so what, one thing you could even do is when you get in the bed mode, you could change your light brightness mm. just to kind of help you mentally start winding into that gear. I'll do that right now. I So I have the, that's the warm lighting. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's what I was thinking. So this is nighttime mode, and then I have, like, daytime or filming mode yeah. for everybody here. Uh, so that, yeah, that's what you were getting at. Yeah. There's, there's a warm light and a white light or cool uh, light. The cool light is very daytime-ish, uh, 6,000 Kelvin. And then the, the warm lighting is for nighttime where you want to relax your brain. Mm -hmm. You want to get that blue light off, right? Like, your, your phone give off that LED brightness. Yeah. It's not good. It's not good for your mental state. But so that that's the cool thing with the Murphys. You do create that line a lot easier than if you have a pull-out bed. Um, since you go through the... You, you, you've you got a routine of you change your light color and everything. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Well, I change my light color as soon as it goes into night mode. Okay. Like, as soon as the sun sets, whether it's in the wintertime at 5 p.m. or summertime at 8 p.m., as soon as that, I'll go into the cozy night mode. Okay. And then it's like, I don't know, I start to wind down. And then I put the bed down, and that's bedtime. And that's when, you know, I shut off to the world. That's me. That's And again, you're like I said, it's like a routine. Yeah, well, ours is a fixed bed in the back. Only time I'm in the bed if I'm taking a nap, which I'm a big fan of, or going I to sleep naps. at night. Yeah. And so that's the only time I touch that area. Um, okay. I did think about doing a slightly different color back there, but I didn't know, just to kind of help with that mental. It does actually help. I don't know if you saw Andy's van before it, took, before it left. His whole bed was like, it was a fixed bed. But it had like a it had like a half wall. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. it's like you knew that over there was the bed. That I always felt is important in a van. It's like know where your things are. Mm -hmm. Like we're sitting in my my living area right now. It's very comfortable. It's very easy. The bed I feel like a lot of your design is around because it takes up one third of your van. And one third of your day. And one third of your day, which is important, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> always leave it to Dan to leave that little stuff in there. Our uh, bookcases were in the back. Okay. Um. And I didn't even think about that till you just said that our cabinets, uh, upper storage actually changed depth at the same bed point. Okay. And Interesting. I did that. I, I did it on. So the those way. are further in, I guess they're, they're like, they, you have more room in the back is what yep. I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say. The TV drops down. So it's only viewable in the, 
in the bedroom. Back, yeah. yeah. And so it kind of. So if you want to watch TV though, it like can, it can do that. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry, I thought about that. I figured you did. I didn't. Even but but the cool thing Who is, to? <laughs> it it does add a wall if you want to watch it. Kind of just the TV drop and adds that wall, so it almost creates a. I see what you're wall. saying. Yep, that's a good point. I'm a big fan of projectors, by the way. Uh, that's like the new the new thing I feel like for vans. They have 12 volt projectors now, pretty much. Well, USB projectors mm -hmm. um, and you know, add battery operated. I love them. I know I just went on a side tangent there, but. I, if I was to keep this van, I would put a screen right in the front, drop down. There's my TV, not only for my bed, but where I'm sitting right now. It's perfect. I really debated the modem phone that had the projector on it. Oh, yeah. But oh, I, yeah. I enjoy my Pixel too much. Motorola made a one that went on. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Motorola, yeah. No way. I love the Google Pixel way too yeah. much. No way. But what else do you want to talk about with beds, man? Before we, before we land up. Uh, on the slat one, you know, the cool thing is, is you can go from a single bench to a double or triple pull out depending on well you kind of just gave something away my man my brother did one and i can maybe put the clip of it right here yeah. uh, my brother did a triple slider so he did a slide and then a slide and then the back portion of it went into place and that created a guest bed that's something i never even considered in our van was sleeping this way because i'm too tall being uh, three, yeah. Yeah. i never can lay out yeah yeah that's a good point that's a good point i guess we didn't really talk about this but bunk beds yeah uh, my brother, again, just put a bunk bed in his van for his two kids. Actually, I believe he made the top one a Murphy. Oh, cool. So it's a Murphy, and then it comes down as a bed for when uh, his daughter wants to sleep, and then the underneath is a is a seating area during the day, and then a bed at night. I saw a bus. They had the, in the back of the bus, they had the master suite on the left side and the triple bunk on the right side. Right. So all the beds were in the back. Interesting. It was a really cool... Interesting. You know, it was more of an, the super compact Asian style sleeping yeah, because yeah. I mean, three beds in a bus. That's three great. is a lot because that means that first bed's gonna be. Well, it was enough room that I, like I could fit in there because I tested okay. it out. Yeah, I guess it's like um like a sailor style. Yeah. Like it's very the compact. But, but it was a cool way to maximize that space so if it, for the family. If you guys hear anything outside, I believe Mark has now turned on his sound system in the shop he yeah. finally got it hooked up and he's very happy about it a rumbling that's what that is so actually on ours we do kind of have a guest bed okay our benches are actually long enough to lay on okay uh, it's since, obviously smaller than a twin right yeah it's it's a capping pad wide though we have enough room since our bed rolls yeah. and it's designed to increase seating it's enough that you can sleep in the bed and then two people can sleep under these your feet are going under the Ma yep, oh, which is fine bed, right but it does give that other seating so if so i was going to ask you if you were to do a second van which i think you're about to well you're doing a more of a box truck yeah. but your next build what is are you doing a fixed bed again or it'll be a most likely a fixed bed cap over the cab that's right but then i'll have a murphy at least a murphy in the back maybe a slider i don't know one definitely okay. want to have a guest since but we'll have that I mean, just putting the bed there means I've got 14 foot right. for an entire whatever. Right. I mean, that's like, you see those, uh, the, what do they call it? The U-Haul trucks. It's yeah. all like mom's yeah. attic yeah. or something Granny's like attic. that. Granny's attic. Thank you. Uh, they call that Granny's attic. So that space will be nice. Are you going to make it? Because the Granny's attic only goes so deep. Are you going to make it like a, like a flip up? Well, I think I'm going to have to make the Granny's attic and all because I think I'm going to make it a pop top and everything. Uh... So I'm still like figuring it out because actually the mattress may even pull in because those cab over some of them flip forward. Yeah. That's a whole lot of math I got to look at. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah, that's kind of the thoughts of where it's at. Main reason I'm wanting to go a bigger rig box truck style is just so I can put a deck on it. Something that can sustain yeah. the weight. That would be kind of cool. All right, any questions before we end up? Have you ever seen a bed design you absolutely hate? A bed design that I absolutely hate? No, typically just the person that makes it. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, well, maybe not hate, but you're like, yeah, I definitely think they're going to redo that or regret it. Or... Honestly, pretty much, and again, this has nothing to do with anybody in particular. It's just anybody that, with the dinette style. The yeah. dinette style, I'm just like, you're going to regret that. It does do its job, but I don't think it's ever the best use. Now, this is just the three people off the top of my head. Out of the three people that I know that have the dinettes, all three of them have said, I would do it differently. Yeah, it's a lot of, like, you physically have to make your bed. Yep. People are like, well, it's not that big a deal. I can just make it no big deal. Like, whatever, it's not, like, it's okay. But again, every single day, twice a day is annoying. This is kind of what Ghost 3 is. If I go there, if I don't sell this, then this is a moot point. But if I do sell this, the new layout is kind of the slotted bed system 
with a seating across from each other. It's gonna be it's gonna be wild. Oh nice. It's gonna be wild. Yeah, seating um, across is nice. Yeah, and I'm still back and forth between the Murphy and a slotted bed. If I did the slide bed, I'd do it like West and Savannah, elevate it up over there, and I want a seating area on this side. See, this is what the problem with beds is like you talk yeah. about the rest of your layout because that's it's so essential. All right, guys, let's uh we're gonna wrap this up. Again, thank you to Skillshare for the sponsor. But you know, Dan, if you have any other words of encouragement, anything of that nature. Oh yeah, appreciate you, man. I've been having some of your people. I've been following us, following you on your journey. Come over to my page. Oh, cool! I've been appreciating seeing that. That was a Dan, that was a way for Dan to plug his channel, which is uh, the Messy Journey, uh, M E S S I, and then Journey, uh, and then Dan and Rachel, uh, which took me a minute to find the other day. By the way, I was like, wait a minute, I'm trying to plug in his name, but I can't yeah. figure it out. Hmm. So it's the Messy Journey and Dan and Rachel. It's all of them. It's all all that, yeah. It's not just the messy journey. Really? Yeah, it's weird. Huh. <laughs> so I'm going to fix that. Yeah, I'm not the best at that kind of you thing. You did post a video recently. Yeah. Uh, how's it going? Um, so I actually posted the wrong one. Okay, I see. I, I didn't voice over on this one. Oh, okay. I was just tired and I just clicked it and uploaded. I was like... Well, go give uh, Dan a follow. <laughs> uh, like and subscribe to my channel. Like and subscribe to his channel. And uh, he's got a lot more stuff coming on. Uh, again, we still haven't, we keep on talking about, we're going to talk about your, tri your trips out to Mexico. We yeah. haven't talked about it yet, so stay tuned for that coming up. I also have an air conditioning video coming up really soon. Not just an air conditioning, but an air cooling on what you can do to cool inside of your van from a DIY cheap version to a very expensive Jared Tachi style version. Wait until you guys see that video. It's going to be interesting. I'm going to see if I can get it out by next week, depending on Mark's schedule. All right, guys. See you next time.